So in this video, we're going to cover whether parrots are actually good pets. We're gonna go ahead and compare parrots to other popular pets such as dogs or cats. A dog is generally, they're kind of like the loyal companion, man's yeah. best friend. They're always there to, to wait and beckon for you. you know, we have two dogs of our own. She's feeling sleepy. She's not being a loyal companion right now. Oh, Go. such a big sausage. There she is. Here's, here's our doggo. This is Cripple. They're loyal and they just like to chill with you or play with you, all the little things they like to do. Cats are generally a lot more independent. They kind of mind their own business. Occasionally they'll be affectionate or like they'll beckon to you for attention, things like that, right? But only on their terms. On their terms. However, birds are not like the other. Birds are like the obnoxious five-year-old who's always demanding attention, screaming, crying, whenever they want something. They're always super moody, but they can also be extremely sweet and affectionate. Oh, now you stop surfing? So we're gonna go ahead and break everything down into a few categories and then go over birds versus dogs and cats in each category, just so you have a better understanding of what's involved if you decide to get a pet pair. Things kind of start out genetically, inherently how different dogs and cats are versus birds. Dogs and cats are domesticated animals, okay? They're bred to be the way that they are. Correct. It was thousands of years of humans getting involved in breeding down wild wolves to get the aggressive traits out. So that way, dog personalities are genetically predisposed to be very friendly animals. Cats uh, done a little differently than dogs. Dogs were direct involvement in order to get that friendly aspect of them, like Crystal here. While others are bred to be more protective of households and stuff. Right, but in the end, they're domesticated animals. Parrots are not domesticated animals. <laughs> no. Let's be clear. They are inherently wild animals. One of the big rewards to having a bird is that the emotions that they display are a lot more raw and real. Not in a way to put down dogs and cats, but because they're domesticated, they're, in my opinion, a little bit robotic in a way because we bred them to be affectionate and to show those kind of personality traits. Whereas wild animals, their emotions are a lot more raw and when you tame them, their, their emotions and their relationship with you is a lot more real, in my opinion. It's kind of like a friendship. You kind of just start off on uneven terms at first trying to learn more about each other and eventually they grow to that affectionate point, whereas dogs they kind of start liking you from the get-go. Exactly. Like you get the new puppy straight from the breeder and they're already all over you, loving you, and, you know, just being all cuddly. Where like our birds crystal. have all taken a lot of work to actually get them to actually be this enjoyable. Uh, birds are great pets if you want a legitimate relationship with an animal. But, again, it requires a lot of work. One uh, big topic about uh, owning any kind of pet, right, it's like, you know, bites, scratches, things like that. So I just got one. <laughs> <laughs> Dog bites are very dangerous because they are larger animals. Cats also have their own little threatening aura in terms of scratches. Bird bites, generally when you get smaller birds, right? Not, not macaws, but most parrots, it just feels like a pinch. So they don't generally hurt, but they can get very dangerous with larger birds, such as macaws. This is why macaws and cockatoos, in my opinion, are absolutely terrible pets especially for first-time bird owners. For comparison, right, a house cat bite is around 75 PSI. A human bite is around 150 PSI. A dog bite is up to 300 PSI, whereas a small parrot bite is around 300 PSI, but again, their area is a lot smaller, just the tips. Where it gets very dangerous is that a large macaw-sized parrot, their bites can go up to a whopping 2,000 PSI. Those are some strong jaws. I, I don't even want to think about the damage. So, see, this is the big thing about, like, birds and, and what freaks out a lot of uh, people is birds don't have hands. Surprise, surprise. They have wings. So, uh, Sakura, can you show your wings? There you go. Oh, see look that? at the pretty. So how birds use hands is they use their beaks. As you can see, Sakura here is just playing using her beak mm -hmm. as she does. It's not biting, 
but birds use their beak in order to grab on things, climb things, and play. She is in a very <laughs> playful mood right now, as you can see. <laughs> oh, baby. Oh. If a bird bites, you will know, because it will generally break skin. So that's something to keep in mind. So here's the other thing about difference with birds versus dogs, for example. Dogs, they're always in a good mood. They want to be with you. Cats, they're a little more independent and can also be moody, but birds are definitely moody animals. If they want to play with you, they will play with you. If they don't want to play with you, they could get nippy sometimes. They will let you know. They will let you know. <laughs> <laughs> There's still an element of raising them correctly and things to mitigate any problems like that. Now, dogs can get, you know, hormonal and moody, uh, whereas, you know, so can birds. They can also get very nippy and angry, especially when they're kind of in breeding season. So that's something also to be very aware of. Generally, every spring, especially male birds, sometimes you just have to leave them be because they are very moody animals during that time. And again, because they're wild animals, those traits, they pop out, so. That is something to keep in mind. Overall, unlike dogs and cats, generally with birds, you have to respect their privacy, their space. Dogs and birds are vocal creatures. Uh, you know, dogs bark a lot, you know, being protective and things like that, or to scare or communicate. Well, birds are a lot more vocal than that. And cats, they just kind of just... They'll, they just kind of meow. They'll purr and they'll yeah. meow when they're happy, but then they hiss when they're angry. Dogs, they just kind of bark for everything. No. <laughs> Dogs bark, but birds are vocal animals. Oh, yeah. Which is one of the main appeals of birds. I mean, who doesn't love a parrot that talks? But you have to understand is they talk because they're very vocal animals in the wild, mm -hmm. and they, they're they so vocal in the wild that they kind of evolved to learn how to talk in order to mask their constant noise so they sound like their other creatures and animals in the wild to kind of blend into the wild. So a defense mechanism. It's a defense mechanism. Again, talking and having a vocal bird, it's a great feature if you can handle the noise, A, but secondly though, it is a terrible thing if you do live in an apartment setting or you have sensitive hearing. Now there are quiet parrot species out there. For example, Sora here, he's a pianist, and these birds are generally pretty quiet birds. Same with green cheeks, they're also yeah. more on the quieter scale. Green cheeks are also pretty quiet. But as just a rule of thumb, birds are generally very noisy animals. And if you live in a very small apartment, you should reconsider whether a parrot is the right pet for you. If you're a first time pet owner and you don't really understand like animal psychology and things like that, you should not mix animals, okay? Generally, birds should not be mixed with dogs and especially cats. Generally, birds are lower on the food chain. For some species of dogs, uh, domesticated dogs, that's okay because they kind of had their, bre uh, their hunting instincts spread out like like Crystal here, who just sleeps all day. We could put a bird on her and she'd be mildly irritated, but she won't actually bite it. Yeah, you should not have any kind of hunting instinct animal with your birds. And also why cats are a terrible choice, because cats generally have a big hunting instinct. I mean, you hear you know, a lot of times people talk about their cat bringing a dead bird home as like a gift or something. So yeah, you don't want your pet bird to be brought to you as a gift. <laughs> oh no! No! Ah, no! So having a dog or cat with your bird should be done with extreme caution and a lot of research yes. and should always be done while you are in constant, like, watch over your animals. Mm -hmm. um, also another thing to avoid is bird mixing. Okay, as you can see, I know, exactly. <laughs> as you can see, we have five different species of birds and they are all getting along. But it is so much work. It is strongly not recommended if you don't understand bird psychology and like knowing how to work with a bird. I recommend people to own just one bird. Generally, that's what you want. Never get multiple birds. And if you do get multiple birds, they should generally be the same species. Mixing bird species are not a good idea. For an example, Sakura here, uh, Kaiks 
are generally known to be one of the most jealous birds out there out of any other species and are known to you know get rid of the competition to put lightly so it is a lot of work to have gotten her to actually not just tolerate the other birds but actually enjoy spending time with the other bird so don't get another bird and at least if you do don't mix species unless you do a, a lot a lot a, a lot. lot of research Yes. And if possible, have them visit the bird beforehand to at least figure out if it's going to be threatening the other bird or not. Because we had our two, our little guys, we got our smaller guys first before her, and we took them to visit each other so that we could exactly. figure out their compatibility. Which, to, to keep in mind, like, Sakura was an aggressive bird with them in the beginning. It was a lot of work. Don't do it unless you really have the amount of hours you need to do it. So now, the next section we want to talk about is care. Comparing what dog care is like to a bird. Dogs and cats generally have a lifespan of about 10 to 15 years. That's still quite a lot of a, uh, a lot of commitment. I'll you know. see a child, like, at least to the beginning of high school, yeah. maybe the end of high school if you're Ex lucky. That's like having a kid and a dog at yeah. the same time, and the dog dies by the time your kid is in high school. That's a very long time. But, having a parrot is not even comparable, okay? Parrot lifespans for some smaller parrots are generally about 10 years, similar to a dog and cat, but bird lifespans can go up to 90 years old. Yes, your bird will probably outlive you. That is not an easy thing to realize. Generally, the larger birds have the longer lifespan. Things like macaws and cockatoos, oh, they yeah. will outlive you. If you are getting one now and you're in your you know, late teens or early 20s, uh, your bird's gonna outlive you. Okay. And, and you're going to have to you know, plan for that. What part of your child's inheritance. Yeah, they're, <laughs> your kids are going to have to take care <laughs> of your bird if you plan to have kids. And if you don't plan to have kids, you better hope you know some younger people who can take your bird in, or at least have a pre-arrangement uh, when you're older with uh, some kind of bird adoption agency or yeah. a center. Now, on average, uh, most birds you end up getting, uh, all our birds here except for Ch Choco, Who's way over here. So the cockatiels are generally about uh, 10 to, there's a record of like 20 years old for a cockatiel. But generally, uh, like conures, uh, pinuses, uh, caiques, like even smaller birds, like small conures, uh, they have a lifespan of 30 years. And that is still double the commitment of a dog. If you had a kid the same time, again, for comparison, your kid will be married and and having and be having kids by then if they chose that as well like that is an incredibly long time to have a bird so that's something to keep in mind another thing about care to keep in mind though is just purely like food intake and costs Ooh, that's a big one. the thing is, is dogs and cats are bigger animals bigger animals mean they eat more food yes. birds generally being smaller animals even a big macaw for example they eat a lot less food. So in a lifetime, owning a bird is, you do save a lot of money in terms of the food. Uh, one big bag, a $30 bag of uh, you know bird pellets, for example, can last you a very long time, depending on your bird, a number of months even. Mm -hmm. So that is something to keep in mind, is like you, you will save costs despite the longer lifespan because of the food. So one difference though with birds is, whereas dogs and cats generally you can just keep them on one kind of diet, you know, dog food, maybe you vary it up every once in a while, it's not quite a necessity. With birds- Just treats every now and then. Right, but bird diets need variety. Generally with birds, you gotta do a mix of pellets, seeds, fruits, veggies, you kind of got to mix everything to in order to maintain a healthy balance. Birds also on top of having a varied diet, they're very messy animals. They love throwing their food everywhere. Another thing also in terms of care, right, uh, just like dogs and cats, you do need to regularly groom your bird uh, because 
birds, they do need their beaks trimmed, they need their nails trimmed, and if you go the, the wing clipping route, which is a whole different topic, you also need to do that as well. So there is regularly grooming, at, generally about at least once a month uh, with your bird. Especially, especially for beak grinding. You gotta get the beaks grind, because in captivity they aren't really able to blunt down their beaks. And if they get too long, they don't stop growing and that can end in disastrous consequences. So just like dogs and cats, you generally need to bathe them. Most birds come from a rainforest environment where it's raining every other day. And if not that, at least a tropical environment. Birds need to get wet regularly mm -hmm. because that's you want to mimic their environment as much as possible. So generally that can be compensated with either giving them an opportunity to bathe themselves with like a bit nice water bowl. Some people uh, put them in the sink and let water drizzle. Some do a mist bottle. Yeah, some people do a mist bottle. Uh, my birds themselves, they love both uh, bathing in their water bowls <laughs> and also taking nice warm showers with us as well. Yeah. They love showers. Uh, it reminds them a lot more about like their natural environment. So. Uh, it's definitely you got to find out what it is your bird prefers. Yeah So now uh, another thing that is pretty similar with birds and dogs and uh, you know like dogs They need chew toys Cats need scratch posts. Well birds They definitely need lots and lots of chew toys birds will go through your chew toys like no other oh. smaller birds maybe not so much but Birds with bigger beaks, like Sora here, they will get through a big toy in a couple days. So, birds, they pretty much will destroy anything they get their beaks on. Anything. Now, generally, dog toys tend to be built to be a lot more durable and last a long time. Generally, it's like hard plastics and things like that. And like the little bone hooves and stuff. Right. But things. birds, not so much. They get the entertainment from destroying the toys. So as such, bird toys are generally made with softer woods and are made to be absolutely destroyed in a very short amount of time. So there will definitely be a budget in terms of buying uh, lots and lots of bird toys. Going back to like the importance of toys, the thing is birds need entertainment. Birds are hyper-intelligent creatures, with some species being as smart as a five-year-old. In fact, even one species, the African Grey, has in the lab shown signs of self-awareness. They are that intelligent of an animal. They do need constant toys and constant things to stimulate their brains, because if they aren't getting stimulated, they develop a lot of psychological issues. Birds being intelligent, almost like a five-year-old, you really have to think about this. You wouldn't keep a five-year-old in his room all day without nothing to entertain him, right? You gotta give him toys to play with, you know, at least a free, like an iPad just to play games on, right? A coloring book. <laughs> a coloring book. The thing is, a kid is smart. They need some kind of mental stimulation, and it's the same thing with keeping a bird. You, you cannot let them be bored. Now the thing is, dogs and cats are nothing like this. Because the thing is, their intelligence is not even close to that of a bird. Birds are higher maintenance in general because of how intelligent they are. Alright, uh, hardiness. So yeah, dogs and cats are definitely, given the exception of the macaws, they're generally bigger size animals. Girl. Bigger mammals are, are generally a lot more hardy of an animal. So another thing about small birds is, or just birds in general, is they're a lot more sensitive than dogs or cats to airborne toxins, such as perfumes, extremely sensitive to perfumes, air fresheners, scented candles. Teflon pans, you know non-stick frying pans and things like that? Those pans work by emitting a, a, a little gas that uh, prevents your food from sticking. Well that gas, is also toxic to birds. Secondhand smoke, uh, cleaning supplies, insecticides, hairsprays, uh, even some hair dryers. They have a Teflon coating on them. All of these things can be extremely deadly to parrots. So you gotta kind of change your lifestyle if you do a lot of scents and things in your home when owning a parrot. Yeah. 
Yep. In fact, back in the day, I'm saying this applies to all birds, not just parrots. But for example, miners back in the day would keep small birds like finches and canaries in a little cage and they would use the birds while they're mining to detect toxins. They would keep them in the uh, in the cage and the, while they're mining, if they see the bird just drop dead within a few minutes because that's how quickly it happened. They know that they're breathing toxic air and they need to get out of the mines as soon as possible. So that kind of shows how sensitive birds are because it was literally an, day, an age old sensor in a way until we, you know, we have modern technology. Uh, another thing, because uh, birds are smaller, they are susceptible to dangers around the house, especially if you decide not to go with clipping their wings. That means, of course, that you got a free-flying bird in your house, which means your house is their entire house, which means Nothing your kitchen is, limits. <laughs> is their kitchen. If you are cooking, your bird is free to come in your kitchen. Yeah, and if, end up being a cooked chicken. That is not something I want for dinner. They could hit glass they can hit mirrors they can hit windows i mean you hear all the time about like you know people seeing like pigeons fly into their windows and uh just end up dead and things like that it's a very common way birds hurt themselves which is again another reason why flight birds aren't for everybody there's a lot of things you're gonna have to do if you keep a flighted bird Ooh, another thing to worry about is fans oh yeah if you have a flighted bird for sure you can't keep a fan oh okay. ever no unless they're caged then you can turn the fan on but yeah. if they are letting them out you gotta turn that fan off. Our birds are not flighted, therefore they're not gonna hit the fan. Exactly. But it's still something that we keep an eye on just for precautionary measures. Right. So yeah, you definitely gotta consider the safety measures if you decide to go with the flighted bird route. Yeah. And again, one of the reasons why birds are so weak is also in order to be, you know, have the ability to fly, their bones are made of cartilage. Uh, so they're very weak bones compared to just about any other animal. Mm -hmm. So that's, again, one of the reasons why they're so fragile. Like, any any little thing, you dropping a box or a book falling on them even, that's enough to just completely obliterate them. They're so sensitive little angels. Yeah, so you gotta keep that in mind. The thing is, if your appeal to birds is because you want, like, a small, durable kind of animal, like a, a dog or a cat, just kind of small and cute and easy to play with, birds aren't that, because they are not durable in the slightest. If you're looking something more akin to a dog or cat, you're better off with, you know, some kind of rodent, like a pet hamster or That's something. Not. And sticking with other mammals. Because birds are nothing like keeping a mammal at all. Availability. Like dogs and cats, parrots and birds are pretty available. You can go to your local pet store, they generally sell a variety of finches, they sell canaries. Uh, we've seen at our local pet store, we actually got Utah here at our pet store, they have uh, green cheek conures and then they've even had cockatiels occasionally. Finding a good store or breeder is extremely difficult to come by. So generally a lot of stores and pet stores, especially big chains, uh, they get birds sometimes even from like farm raised, mass produced, very little <laughs> interaction with people. Uh, it's just not exactly the best environment you want to buy a bird from. And that's why a lot of times birds at like PetSmart or Petco or like other big chains, the birds are very shy, very flighty, sometimes they can be very mean and nippy. They're just not fun pets. And especially a lot of these farm-raised parrots, they come from, you know, kind of inhumane living conditions. And, and to me, I, I don't want to support those kind of businesses. So this is why we're personally a, a big strong supporter of high quality breeders and specialized bird pet shops. Uh, shops that actually put in the effort to ethically source the birds and also make sure that they're raised in a good environment. So to go into detail what to look for in a, a good breeder or pet shop, that, that's kind of a big long topic, but the general gist of it is you want to find a pet shop or breeder that encourages human interaction. Mm -hmm. That's the big thing. Because a shop or breeder that encourages human interaction, while the birds are still young, will make birds start to believe that the flock they're a part of are humans. Birds and humans are kind of the same thing. We're all part of one big flock. And that mentality into tricking birds into thinking humans are like birds is what produces such friendly good animals. Right, Yoshi? Right? Right, Sakura? Right? Ow! Aww. 
So as such, it's best to do your own research on what you're looking for in a parrot, and then also finding a good local breeder or pet store where you can interact with those birds before you purchase them. Uh, in order to find out what they're really like. And that's kind of the main thing, because a lot of pet stores don't let you interact with the birds beforehand. That, to me, is one of the big red flags as to what's a bad pet store. Uh, a great pet store, at least here in Southern California, that we got most of our birds from is Omar's. Mm -hmm. Omar's is absolutely great, because you go inside, and the birds that are for sale are a, a petting zoo. Each of the birds have their own petting stand where anyone can go up and interact with the birds. And what this does is, A, it psychologically creates the birds into that flock mentality that humans and birds are the same and we interact on the daily. And then secondly, it gives you the chance to play with the bird and find out if that bird is the right bird for you and see if that bird chooses you. And that's how you know you have a, a, a good pet store. You just feel kind of that little click, like, this is the bird, this one is for me. Exactly. That's how it felt with our birds. You just like, we just knew that they were the right ones for us after interacting with them for a little bit. Exactly. So generally with dogs and cats, they're very affordable pets with a low upfront cost. So generally you just gotta, per when it comes to them, you gotta purchase their bed, their dog bowls, their dog food, their toys for cats, a litter box for dogs, and for both of them you need to purchase a crate for when you need to take them over to the vet or just on outings. So not too uh, big at least for an upstart cost, right. an upfront cost. Yeah. The big purchase though is actually purchasing the dog which can go from anywhere from 300 to over a thousand dollars depending on where Generally you're getting over a thousand where you're it also depends where you're getting it from if you're getting um from a shelter or if you're buying from a breeder or a pet store but birds are a lot more affordable in terms of the animal itself from a respectable breeder generally it's like about a hundred dollars for a small bird you can get birds for a lot less but then they're not really that you know high quality of a, a pet right. but birds can also get very very expensive uh if they're an endangered species uh, or very heavily sought after. Uh, so or just bigger in size. Exactly. So for example, like like a, an endangered bird that's heavily sought after uh, can go up to $15,000. But birds, they do have you know different kind of upfront costs that are a little more expensive than uh, a dog or cat. Generally, like a small parrot cage you know, that's about like $30, maybe $60, whereas a medium to large size bird cage can go over, well over $100. Especially a big bird like a macaw, you know, you can end up spending nearly $1,000 on a cage. And on top of that, uh, you know, if your cage doesn't have a playset, I think it's also a very good idea to have a playset or at least build your own playset for the bird. If you build one, you can probably build a playset for about $20, that's what we did. Or you can buy a playset and those generally end up costing at least $100 to $200. Also in general, because birds are a less common pet and they're a lot more destructible, bird toys tend to be a lot more expensive. They're not as mass produced and generally they're made of wood. so your costs kind of go into that. It's not like just injection molded plastic like a dog. So in the end, for your first cage and a few toys, your upfront costs are looking about like $50 to $100 at least for you know your average kind of setup. But the cost of maintaining toys at least is largely dependent on how destructive your parrot is. Hopefully you don't have a parrot that destroys as many toys and your cost for buying new toys is a lot less. Vet prices for dogs and cats and birds is a little bit varied. Um, generally with birds, there's not really vaccines, whereas for like dogs and cats, the vaccine costs are pretty high up there. And need to be taken like yearly and, and, and Yeah, and you need to be regularly doing the vaccines while they're young until they're an adult. Whereas with birds, there's not really vaccines because when you keep a bird, they're not really going out that often, let alone meeting with other birds uh, like dogs and cats are. And Generally, your costs with an uh, avian vet, it's just going to be regular checkups. Make sure they're healthy and eating properly. Exactly, which 
those are going to be similar costs to any other animal. Also, another thing is your upkeep cost for birds generally is a lot less, again, depending on how destructive the bird is, but that largely is what we mentioned before, where it's about uh, the food. Birds eat a lot less food than dogs and cats, so as such, you do save a lot of money in terms of food. Also, grooming costs for birds are a lot more affordable than dogs or cats. With birds, grooming costs is generally maybe 10 to 20 dollars a month because it's just beak trimming and nail trimming and wing clipping whereas uh dogs and cats you're generally spending 30 to 90 dollars a visit because you're also getting like haircuts and all these things on top of you know, teeth brushing yeah teeth you have teeth brushing their claws uh getting trimmed etc etc so that pretty much covers everything broadly about getting a pet bird versus getting a dog or a cat. We'll probably go over some of these points in more detail in other videos. Right, but this should give you a general idea as you are currently right now researching whether you want to get a pet parrot or not. Hopefully this can help clarify all of these things and help you understand what you're getting involved into. Overall, owning a pet parrot is extremely rewarding but also extremely high maintenance. And as such, it is not for everyone. Please, do not be one of those pet owners that buy a pet parrot, leave them in the corner the rest of their lives, and wonder why their bird is always mean and not a fun animal to be around. They are a lot of work. Uh, it is like keeping a five-year-old child. I cannot stress that enough. Birds are not a good pet for most people. If you want a very easy to care for, low maintenance pet, Stick with a dog or cat. A yeah. parrot is not for you. A parrot is an animal that you are willing to spend a long amount of time with and a large portion of your life with. If you get a parrot, you are probably spending 30 years with your animal. So it is a big commitment and not something you should be taking lightly. So overall, if you like this information, go ahead, leave a like right now. Uh, this being a new channel, we really could you know, use any traction we can get, so please drop a like right now. If you have any questions about bird ownership or other topics you would like us to cover, please go ahead, leave a comment right now, ask us, and we will try to be on top of it. And we will also try to create some new videos in the future to help answer those questions in greater detail. If you also then would like to see more information about birds, Go ahead and hit the subscribe button right now because we plan to go ahead and flesh out uh, all the information you need to know about bird ownership on our channel and we just really want to help grow the uh, you know parrot community because it is such a rewarding animal to own and it's a big responsibility and we want to make sure that people who do get birds understand all the work that goes into it so please go ahead again like subscribe leave a question down below and we'll get back to you so thank you very much for watching say bye bye sakura say bye bye can you guys say bye bye <laughs> all right see you bye. guys the next time bye bye